So FileMaker in Node-RED is the name of the session today. And uh, under normal circumstances, the room would like look like this. Crowded room with hot air in the middle of Berlin without any climate control. So perhaps is a good sign that it's not that way this year. The photo was taken five years ago. Some of you might remember. And the last year brought us some different conditions. So everything is online now. We are all used to do our presentations on Zoom. And there were some other circumstances in our lives that were not so ideal. And we have nevertheless to deal with it and find our way through it. But as in every weird situation, there's always something good to discover. And uh, I will show you today what, what I discovered in these times of lockdown. And I hope that we keep the spirit alive and we find everyone find it's his way to go on. And let's see what we have today. Before I start, let's give me a short introduction. Who's speaking? That's me. My name is Marcel, I'm from Germany. I was a computer kid in the 80s and uh, got early, very early into IT. So that today I'm in this profession for more than 36 years now. I started FileMaker developing in version three as a tool for myself and for my clients. And later on it uh, go, went more in the direction that I'm doing consulting work as an information architect, but I'm still developing. So Ekber told us to give a little, little bit context where, where I am now today talking to you. I'm in Wilperode, that's a very, very small village, about 200 inhabitants here in the middle of Germany. And uh, this is an old map. It's right on the former border inside Germany between East and West Germany. And uh, this little village is located in the restricted area where even the Eastern Germans could not go because uh, there were heavy military here and a big fence. And uh, so that means in this place, uh, quite a few things did not change in the last decades. This house here is uh, about 250 years old and all this uh, situation around here is uh, quite a lot since it was 60, 70, 80 years ago. So it's a quite comfortable place to sit in lockdown. I can do my summer office a bit outside in the garden. And around our place, there are some lakes and uh, natures with birds and animals and we are situated right north to the Harz Mountains. Perhaps uh, some of you know it. It's a nice area where you can go uh, spending your vacations and with uh, mountains, lakes, forests. If you are interested to have a visit, drop me a line later, perhaps we could arrange something. This is about 30 minutes from my home here in the mountains. This is a lake next to me. I do my morning walk or evening walk after sitting on the computer there. And it really helped me to get over the lockdown in Corona times uh, to have these possibilities to be outside here. So I love to go hiking. And I'm an amateur photographer, as you can see in the slides. So it's a nice opportunity today. And of course, I'm a Mac guy for a really, really long time. And this is the setup here at my desk today where I start the presentation for you. So welcome. And now we can start on to Node-RED. So the first question is, uh, what is Node-RED? Perhaps uh, uh, you have heard something about it before. I, I try to get in gallery mode here to see you. And I would ask you kindly to raise your hand if you have uh, did something with Node-RED or heard of it or uh, have an idea of it, what it does. Okay, there are some of you, thank you. And we start with a short 
abstract to get an impression. Lone Dread is in, in a low code platform that sounds familiar to us because there's another low code platform. We we'll talk in a minute. You can build flows easily in your web browser and Node Red integrates with IoT and cloud services very well. And uh, that's a an, an big aspect of it. And you can even deploy your own APIs if you need to. So we will uh, see it in action later, but just to give you an idea uh, what Node Red is all about. And of course we are in the red pill room today. So that's a nice coincidence. And I'm wearing a red shirt from Eggbird five years ago. So why Node Red? You might ask because uh, we got Claris Connect. So why do we need Node Red? It's also a low-code platform, and perhaps even better. So Node Red, uh, sorry, Claris Connect and Node Red um, are quite uh, now um, be made in the same, developed in the same time around 2015, I think. And uh, Claris uh, Connect was bought from. Um, Stemplay uh, was announced in 2019 from Claris and they made some vague promises about the platform and what we uh, could expect to do with it. It was introduced uh, in, in early in 2020 and um, I remember a session we made with some uh, colleagues, uh, FileMaker guys. Uh, we met end of 2019. Uh, uh, we rented a hotel room out in nowhere to, to spend a weekend with Claris Connect and uh, had high expectations and could find out nothing, really nothing. It was not even possible to log in at the time, uh, despite we had some Claris partner accounts, uh, but at the time it was uh, really too early to get into Claris Connect. Then later in the year 2020, in March, there was a um, Claris uh, partner event where there were some screencasts uh, and they showed us some tools inside Claris Connect. And finally, in the middle of 2020, it was released with a price tag, but without any suitable information. This was my impression at this time. So I think Claris somehow missed a chance there. Uh, we are long-standing FileMaker developers and uh, we have not been onboarded in an elegant, nice way so that we can get an idea about Claris Connect and what to do with it and uh, make some testing or whatever. And uh, so at that moment, um, I realized it is not my uh, business app for the moment. I forgot about Claris Connect and uh, my impression at, at last year was it is not ready yet for us. Perhaps for some, from, for some of us who were in the ETS and get, got deeper insights, but um, I might come back to it when it, there is an ultimate reason, perhaps some killer application. I don't know yet uh, that Claris Connect makes some sense for us, for us as FileMaker developers, especially. But I'm still happy to see Claris to step into this new area because I, I hope them to succeed because the time is ready now for the low code revolution. I used my time in between to explore low code a bit further and to detect the uh, potentials. And uh, I was surprised there are some other players uh, in this area, not only uh, Connect, and that is uh, where Node Red came into play. And uh, the story is a bit funny how Node Red came to me, because I had no idea at all about uh, what is Node Red and what you can do with it. And um, I looked at the website and uh, was not that um, well. Uh, had no well idea. But then in, in November 2020, the Raspi 400 was announced. I found this uh, one morning on, on Twitter and said, oh, that looks interesting. Uh, I know a bit about Raspi and I thought that could be a nice uh, Christmas gift for my son. So you see the little Christmas tree here that was late November and I managed to order a, a device that was uh, early enough here to, uh, to gift it to my son. And my idea was it could be a kind of Trojan horse to get him in, into uh, developing and programming. He uh, was 12 at this time. And that was the time when I started uh, uh, deeply in programming. So uh, it looked interesting. And then um, we got this device on Christmas day, a cheap Linux box for only 70 bucks. It is a no brainer to, it is well equipped. It's a fully PC. 
And what really surprised me, it was uh, ready in three minutes. That is not a lie. We, we sit there under the Christmas tree, plugged it into a power. I had a, uh, a display there, plugged it to the display. Uh, we put in the credentials for my Wi-Fi and three minutes later, uh, uh, we got a running machine. And uh, I'm not a Linux guy uh, since that moment. So I thought it would be complicated, some uh, cryptic console uh, commands to put in. But to my surprise, there was pre-installed software with a desktop. And one of these software packages was Node-RED. So uh, the Trojan horse <laughs> finally played out as a Trojan horse for me to get into Node-RED. So I occupied the machine. <laughs> My son is still lucky with his iMac. And this is what you see if you start the, uh, the, the RESPI. And uh, you see this uh, red arrow here at the bottom left. And there is this node red icon. And I was a bit hesitating and said, OK, what will happen? But I said, OK, there could not go wrong anything. This is a new, fresh installed machine. And if something goes wrong, uh, I will install it again. And so the risk was low. And as I clicked, um, I got this, sorry. There was a console window and said, I said, oh yeah, yes, now comes the Linux part. Uh, I'm not lucky to make something with it, but then my uh, Neugier, how you say it in English, uh, sorry. I was uh, curious enough to, to read the text and click on this uh, link here. There was an IP address and the port 1880, what I did. And then the browser window, opened and uh, looked like this. And so I was hooked. I said, oh, that looks interesting. There are some elements there. There's a workspace. There are some controls. Perhaps I can do something with it. And so the next days I played a bit around and uh, dragged some things, what we will do in a minute. And uh, it did not play out that well at the moment. There was quite a learning curve. But at the next weekend, I went on, I spent on YouTube and on Google and uh, was looking for tutorials and was surprised to uh, get step into a new world. Uh, the web is full of tutorials for not only the RESPI, but also for Node Red. What I found there really made me excited because uh, there were tons of projects and not projects uh, of hardcore developers like us, but of ordinary people that did these projects to uh, do all kinds of things. And so uh, I investigated a bit further and uh, found out what I can do with Node-RED and how it works. And I will explain you in, in a few short uh, uh, steps and then we step into it and uh, you can get your own impression. It's all about JSON. So we know JSON as FileMaker developers for quite a time now, and it sounds familiar. And in Node-RED goes a bit further, everything is JSON. Every object, every flow, or every message, message is built on JSON because Node-RED is a kind of a message broker. You have objects that send messages to each other, and uh, Node-RED is a platform who does it for you. It's built on top of Node.js. You might know this. Node.js is a kind of JavaScript server, uh, highly parallel, uh, runs at a um, standalone uh, or um, some kind of service uh, in, in, on your system. And uh, Node-RED is built on top of it. And so the message pipeline works autonomous. If you deploy your, uh, your flow, it uh, works for you in parallel and it's highly scalable. So nodes uh, trigger and receive messages. Nodes, is, I think Claris Connect has something similar. You, you put in an element and the element uh, sends a message. The message has a payload and some metadata. And with a payload, you can uh, build your flows. So the messages can be built, transformed, rooted. There are building blocks for basic operations. And there is a modular plugin architecture for integration. And that is a, a really interesting part because there are many of it and uh, for many different uh, types of integrations, hardware integration, system integrations, API integrations, and uh, all sorts of things you can uh, think about. And finally, because this, this is built on Node, Node.js is JavaScript. And uh, you, if you are suitable with JavaScript, you can do your own uh, logic code within the objects and uh, that could be a great helper for things that are not uh, built in but 
you can even live without it. So this is a Node-RED website. Here are some words what they think they are. Node-RED is a programming tool for wiring together hardware devices, uh, devices, APIs, and online services in new and interesting ways. That says a lot, we will see. So let's get practical. I change uh, the presentation mode here. Uh, but first, uh, to give you an overview, what we will do in the next uh, about uh, 45 minutes, um, we see the, the workspace. We build some very basic flows. We have a look at plugins and hardware integration. I will show you some devices here that are integrated uh, with the Raspi, with Node-RED. We look at dashboards, it's an interesting part of it. We built an own REST API in less than a minute. Believe me, it, it works. We connect to FileMaker and then comes the interesting part. Uh, we talk about the basic setup, what to do uh, to integrate this FileMaker. We pull AP data out of the web and put it into FileMaker database. And we do the other way around. We, uh, we take a FileMaker database and build a an REST API for it with the help of Node-RED. So uh, some really interesting things. And we start simple. I have to switch the screen sharing. Oops, it works. We're going to into the browser. So now you should see the browser window here. This is dot fmp, and there we are. This is the node red. Can, can I ask one really quick question? Yes. Yeah, so essentially, we, they're, they're kind of pre-built machine images for the Raspberry Pi that we can just download, burn to a, um, and, and then just install that way? Yes, uh, we, um, we will see. Um, I've uh, packed you a, li a list of uh, starting points for later on. Uh, okay, come cool, to this. cool, perfect. And there's for every OS, for every kind of hosting or on-premise solution, uh, there are tutorials, and it's really easy. I had to reinstall uh, the Raspi one time when something other went wrong and it was set up again in about 20 minutes and I'm not a Linux guy. I, I just uh, got some tutorial from the web and does it and it worked. So That's here is something. Deployment. Yes. So we, we have a look at the, at the window here. On the left side, we have some uh, elements in color. There's this big white space here with uh, lines in it. And at the right side, we have uh, some kind of information palette. And here are some uh, uh, buttons and uh, a hamburger menu at the top. And uh, there's quite a lot of power in it. We will see later, there are some palettes and there's an interesting part. But we, uh, we start very simple here on top of it, there are some uh, tabs. So here is where your flows live. And if you started, there's just uh, three or five empty tabs. And I've prepared one here for today that sounds uh, .fmp. You can double click on it, give it a name, and um, can drag something into it. So we have the blocks. And as you see, the blocks are divided by some uh, different types. Uh, we have functions, we have networking, we have input, uh, output, uh, some sequence. Uh, everything you can imagine, and the list is long. It's not the pre-installed. I just installed some uh, plugins, uh, but we start here with the, with the basic ones on top of it. You saw it. Uh, there is some help. If you uh, put the mouse over it, you will get an idea what this uh, element is about, and you can open um, tutorial on the web or here in the right side. There is a little. Uh, more uh, text with details about it. So uh, you can manage to uh, to find your way with it. So, but the, the really understanding begins if you saw someone else building a flow, because at this point I had no idea what this all means and I clicked around, nothing happens. But uh, as I learned early in a, uh, a little tutorial, I can put in these two elements here. One is a trigger and it triggers a timestamp and the other is a, um, payload and it uh, outputs the message. So there's this uh, little pane here with a, with a bug, this oh. is a debugging pane. We can wire this together and you uh, recognize this little blue pills. Oh, there's someone else talking. Uh, mute the 
the channel. Anyone knows who's talking that we can stop this? Giancarlo, wait a moment. I'll... Okay, yes, found him. Yeah. Not to stop it now. Yes, mm -hmm. sorry. So you see the little blue uh, dots here on top of it, and that means uh, the new element has not been deployed yet. It has not been compiled internally to the uh, Node-RED service. So there's uh, the big red deploy button here on the top uh, right. I press it, then comes a message that it, uh, the flow has been compiled, and all the blue bullets are gone. And so that means uh, the flow is ready to fire. And I press the button here on the left, and now something happens. A uh, timestamp was injected, and the, uh, the message object has put it into the um, debugging window. So I can press it again and again and uh, generate new messages. And when you click on these uh, objects, you get an info pane with some properties. Uh, here, there are different um, properties to change. We can change this from a timestamp uh, uh, to a string. I type in some text. and say, okay, now we have the blue bullet again because we changed something, we have deployed again. It is recompiled and I can press the trigger button and now we have the text hello.fmp, just what I entered into this uh, message. And even the uh, message object has some properties. Um, we can say what part of the message should be uh, displayed. In this case, it is the message payload object. Uh, it's kind of uh, default where everything goes. Every uh, object that sends messages normally send them as payload, but there are um, other types of messages as well. And you can add something. You can say, okay, I have an ID. Uh, it's like JSON. You can nest it uh, deeper and uh, make more sophisticated uh, type of messages if you like to. And here is a, um, the blue thing is that we route it to the debug window. We could send it to system console or anywhere else. There are some possibilities here. There are other types of um, objects. Here is a comment. I uh, can type something in to make uh, some explanations of what the flow is about. And uh, we have functions can rewire this, click the line, delete it. And perhaps we put in uh, not a text, but a number. I take a number object, 42 is the sense of life I heard. So we route this to this function. And here we have a um, uh, programming type of control. I can uh, set my message, um, payload. to a new value, we multiply by two, perhaps this is semicolon and return the message to the next element, deploy it again. And we would expect to do it something if I play, press the trigger again. So 42 was the input, we multiply it by two and here we have 84 as a result. So we get the idea. There are all kinds of different controls here. There are uh, predefined um, elements to switch, to uh, change something, to build uh, some kind of buffer, to build random numbers or whatever you uh, like. And you can drag and uh, connect them in any uh, order you want. If that makes sense is another question, but uh, it's, it's quite easy a way to, to make something. So we have a different payload here. We can try to deploy this and look what happens. I think uh, we don't get the random number because it has no trigger, but uh, I put this in front of this. So the trigger triggers the random and the random goes to the function and the function goes to the output and uh, something should happen. Let's try. Okay, we have a 10, we have an 18. So there are random numbers now in our flow. You get the basic idea. So everything we built here is a new flow. Uh, we gave it a name, we uh, did a comment on it, we deployed it, and now um, perhaps you will um, put it on another machine so you can export the whole thing. 
and um, have different options. You can see here, even the, um, the element itself is kind of JSON object or the whole flow. You can uh, look into this flow and this JSON object. So you can uh, copy it to the clipboard or download it as, as a, a file, or you can uh, make it pretty print here. And everything we, uh, we defined is inside some JSON object. And so it's a very simple method, very clean and straightforward. And um, there are further methods to uh, make real projects. Uh, you can uh, put it into Git repositories and uh, there are deployment mechanisms. Uh, but for the beginning, we just uh, sit here and do something in our browser uh, that runs on the RESPI in the background. So then we have uh, the palette menu here. And this looks promising. Uh, we see there are some things installed here already, and there is an empty pane. It really looks uh, uh, not that uh, interesting, but if you look at the number here, there are over 3,300 modules, one line that you can deploy and insert into your workspace. So you can imagine anything you uh, you like. Uh, you look if there is something uh, for images or for uh, creating the weather or what else, and you get a long list of, of plugins. It's it's like MBS. We left at this uh, installation palette here, and uh, what I tried to show you is uh, the uh, broad range of different. Uh, plugin modules that are available for uh, Node-RED. And uh, we played around a bit with some uh, things that are in there. You can uh, read it on the website, what is this all is about and what you can do with it. Is, with it. And there are over 3,000 contributions. And so the chances uh, were high enough to type in FileMaker and look at this. We got a FileMaker contribution for Node Red. And uh, so if you look into it, there's quite a lot. There's a table of contents because the page is so long. And there's all kinds of uh, elements uh, to connect um, Node Red to the data IP on FileMaker server. And there's a guy, uh, Red, is Louis de, de la Pau, and he um, integrated this uh, plugin. Seems that he had a lot to do uh, to integrate different parts of it. There is a virtual FileMaker client involved and some more magic in the, in the back. Uh, but finally, all you have to do if you're using uh, Notepad is to uh, click on the on button, uh, it will install the thing for you. I did it before, so um, it's here in my list. And if, uh, look into our objects on the left side here, a new section that uh, says FileMaker. And we have different types of uh, objects we can use. There's a, a product info, you can log it in. Um, and uh, all we need to do is uh, give it um, some kind of authentication to our um, client. And uh, we can get into this uh, a few minutes later. Uh, but uh, finally, I think this is part where uh, it gets interesting for us as developers. Before we uh, go into FileMaker, I have a few other examples that I will show you in advance. Uh, we have this thing with uh, hardware integration that is really interesting. And so, uh, Perhaps if we uh, will look up um, the weather, sorry, it's another thing. We can send out some uh, web request to any web page. And then there are some nodes to parse uh, out uh, the data that is inside uh, this, uh, this website here. Uh, we can do it by CSS selectors, very simple, because there is uh, a the Click on it, I don't know if I 
information. You know this if you are doing some, some web stuff. Uh, then this is a uh, uh, source code of the website, and there's a, a, a node here, it's P class temperature, uh, temperature, and there's the value we are interested in. And so there's a uh, mechanism inside uh, Node Red that is an HTML parser, and you can hand it over a uh, kind of node uh, address, and it receives a result as text, or as HTML, or as uh, single. A message or multiple array of messages, uh, different ways to deal with it, and then uh, we can do something with it. And this time we have a, a good, um, flow that puts out something in here. We trigger this, and we get a value 70.3. So we have something similar for Berlin here. Uh, it was yesterday as a demo. Click on it and it says uh, 26.8 degrees in Berlin and clear sky. We even get a description. There is another uh, mechanism to do such things. Uh, you can open an account at Open Weather Map, that is a, a REST API provider. And, uh, you have to put in the, um, the key. You end this as uh, parameters with this uh, injection object here. Look at if there's a, a key for this service. Uh, we query um, Berlin, we uh, put the units and the language we, do, we would like to receive, and all this is a JSON object. Uh, we would forward to this HTTP uh, request, and then the result will be delivered as a message payload, and we can just dig into it. And as it is um, JSON, we take out some uh, sub objects of the, of the JSON part uh, of the payload. We go to main and then to temp to put the temperature, and we will get a description, uh, several descriptions. And we put the zero as the first item we get, and then uh, we put it here on the output. But we uh, do another thing with it uh, we put it on the dashboard. And we put uh, this dashboard in the background here. It's part of uh, Red that you can uh, have a dashboard component and many of them is the weather. You can see these nice uh, gauches with text on it and uh, some, uh, some radios that are displayed. And this is real time coming from the API request we just sent with this opportunity. It's out to the window. Showed it. And the basic idea here is to show you uh, how to communicate between different services. We start with a simple HTTP request. Um, this kind of uh, dashboard element here, and uh, we can create a group that is named uh, Hearts Weather because it is a Hearts Mountain, so it is a starting point for you. And we have different uh, types of uh, display. Level output just to try try it again. And so the dashboard refreshes in the background, and so we have another kind of uh, display type here for the building weather. So very simple, a few clicks, you put a donut, you can find a range, and put some colors on it, uh, put in some kind of formatting to go again. Now we have donut for the Berlin weather temperature. It's a bit different as it works here on top. So you see, it's very easy to, um, to get the data, to uh, manipulate the data, to deploy the data, and to display it again. And um, there are some other nice uh, possibilities because there is um, an iOS uh, client for Node Red uh, that displays this uh, kind of dashboards for you. I put it in Front of you and another camera, and I hope uh, the connection will not break down again. So you see this uh, iPhone here in front of me. I hope. I'm sorry. So what you see is I have an app here, Node Red UI, and it connects to this kind of dashboards. And um, we will see that there is the same uh, dashboard on the iPhone now as on the uh, on the web browser. And if I change something, I change here the uh, the first 
item on the dashboard to display in a different way. We make a donut as well. I deploy it again and now have a look at the iPhone. The iPhone uh, will uh, need a second to uh, get the refresh and then uh, the dashboard on the mobile phone will change as well. I hope some other I have to deploy again. So now something should refresh just a second. And you see there is the new donut dashboard element. So very simple. What we saw, we could accept the output of the dashboards inside the web browser. Uh, we could even put it into a web viewer and FileMaker if we like to, or we could put it into a, a mobile device. So there are quite some uh, possibilities to uh, make something happen with it. Okay, we go back and I promised you to show some hardware integration as well. We have, um, you know, perhaps uh, the U Lightning system uh, from Philips. Uh, there is even a plugin for uh, for U system to integrate into Node-RED. Uh, when you load the plugin, you have a kind of um, property to find a bridge. Uh, you can type in the, the bridge of your, uh, the IP address of your U bridge, or you can get this pop-up menu. It uh, does a um, search inside the local network and shows you all the bridges that are available. You can click on it, get an API key, uh, API key to um, put in and you're ready to do something with it. And uh, the same as with this FileMaker list, we have this for you. There are uh, many kind of um, elements that we can make use of and just drag it in and uh, make something with it. So I uh, again switch the um, video here. You see this um, element and I put the uh, dashboard with some light switches, virtual light switches on my iPhone beside it. And uh, you see that the uh, that there is some uh, lights on right now. There's a switch on the top for the main light. Uh, there's a level, I drag it and something happens. Uh, the light goes down here. You see it perhaps on the table that uh, there's a bit darker on that right now, but something else. I use a hardware uh, from, the remote here and uh, make it more bright. And then uh, the um, <coughs> element on the iPhone should change as well while I am doing something here. This is the other slider here, second one. When I uh, use it, uh, the iPhone change, it changes. So this is the magic of uh, Node-RED that everything, the whole message um, just are sent uh, in the back end, we have uh, switch it on and off to make it light again here, a bit brighter. OK, bright enough again. What I will uh, show you with this is that uh, everything runs in the background. Uh, the message broker does its work. Um, so we have a plugin here uh, that is um, reading the state of the hardware puts it to some logic. We have some switches here. The switches are also on the dashboard. A, this is a definition of the light dashboard and we can define uh, what to do. Uh, there's a true and false state or uh, for the brightness, there is some uh, level we can get out of the hardware. And finally, if we did our processing here, we put it back into the hardware. The hardware retrieves some values and it reads some values. And we put the value into the light and the light uh, uh, goes on or off or in another color or whatever we would like to do. And we have this virtual buttons here and this virtual button sits on our dashboard. And uh, so we can uh, use the dashboard as well. Here's the light and uh, make something with it. You see perhaps in my in my face that it gets a bit darker and a bit lighter when I switch because the light is here uh, just beside me. And so we have uh, uh, easy possibility to um, manipulate uh, IoT devices with the help of some simple dashboards and put some logic behind it. So here are basically two different lights and uh, some uh, dashboard elements and we read some values and put the values back 
uh, to the devices and the device uh, react immediately. And all the protocols and networking behind it, it's uh, uh, not that, that we have to deal with it. Uh, Node Red does it and um, the plugin uh, translates it to the proper protocols uh, so that something can happen. So I make it a bit shorter here that we have uh, more time left for uh, the FileMaker database. I have another uh, small device here that is um, a motion sensor and we will see a database in a few minutes that uh, registers if someone uh, goes through uh, the motion sensor area and then we uh, trigger a counter in a FileMaker database. So I will have to do some setup to show you. Start our file maker server. So I have a virtual machine here. There is some file maker server on Linux. Just started. Machine is still running in suspense state. So we can uh, go into the server console. Right now from here. So we see a running Linux server and there's something else. Um, I prepared um, data IP connector. When you look at this tab, you might know. You can activate the FileMaker data API. This is activated here. And I prepared some simple uh, files, FileMaker files. I will open one of them. So I connect to this virtual Linux host. And there is the test file. And it just opens. And I promised you there is this motion sensor and it will do something. And now you saw, just saw that it triggered. I have to wait a second since it recognized that there is no uh, motion anymore. We open the flow for this. Uh, I hope this is the right one. Because we can see this here. What we do is we get this motion, trigger a script in FileMaker, and the FileMaker performs uh, a counter. So, and here the green light in the middle, this one, there is uh, it's, uh, it's a state that says uh, there was motion tracked. So I could not manage to to hold it that still in my hand. I put it on the desk again. We wait some seconds until the state is, uh, goes away and there's no motion anymore. The state will then change here. I hope you can see this. I make it a bit bigger. So now it's gray. And uh, this is the element for the, for the motion trigger. It is wireless inside my Philips U network. And if I put my hand before it, we will see that it will trigger. And at the same time, the FileMaker database uh, will count one step further. So this is a simple, quite simple application. And now I will show you what to do um, to set this up. We saw uh, before that the data API is activated. And there is another prerequisite that is uh, quite important for the, for the uh, plugin. We need um, a valid SSL certificate. I don't know why. Perhaps it is a built-in security for the, from the uh, guy who built the plugin. He would only allow a connection to data API if SSL certificate is uh, available. And uh, I managed to install a very simple certificate here on the local uh, uh, domain. This is a fake domain. It's not outside in the web. This is fms.emarcelmore.de. It sits only in my local host file. I uh, made an SSL certificate process with email. So I uh, got this certificate um, 
um, request that I could approve. And finally, I got the um, SSL file that I could install into my virtual Linux box here and uh, was ready to uh, start uh, within 20 minutes or so uh, to install the virtual server, to get the certificate and uh, to set up the data API. So this is the part uh, on site of the FileMaker server. And uh, what we can do now is um, we need this FileMaker plugin. And there are some basic um, elements here to, to get the uh, product info perhaps. And if you make use of one of these uh, FileMaker elements, you need a connection to the bridge, to the, to the, to the data API. And uh, there are some uh, selected here before. All you have to do is to put in your server name. This is this virtual uh, subdomain that I just showed you. I gave it a name. I uh, give here the name of the database that it should connect to. You recognize it's the same as here. Um, it requires SSL. Without it, it would not be possible. And down here is a data API account and password. And this is uh, what I have to do on the side of the FileMaker file. I go into security and uh, make it a bit larger that you can see it. There is an own account for the data API. And uh, there you put in the credentials uh, for uh, account name and uh, password uh, that is then entered here in this preferences pane inside Node-RED. And that's all. And now you have a connection. We can test this because we have here a product info node that gives us the payload. We try it, trigger it, and there comes something back, a JSON object that says, okay, we have a FileMaker data API engine with build version and some other information. So uh, that was a basic operation to set up the whole process, the server in the background, the database with the right credentials and some connecting authentication uh, credentials here inside the Node-RED plugin. And that's all. You can do it in five minutes and then you can play around with it because there are many other interesting uh, uh, types of uh, elements here. I can trigger this one. It will give us a list of databases. Here comes a JSON object with an array inside. There are three objects. And there is a name of these uh, databases inside. That is uh, what we have seen before here in the uh, list of uh, open databases on the FileMaker server. And so we have some basic uh, operations to uh, communicate with each other. And now the question, what can we do with it? We saw this um, database with the hardware integration. We had this hardware integration here before on another uh, um, flow. We could co copy some logic of it, put it over into the FileMaker data API flow and uh, wire it together. And the same is true here with the, with the web, uh, weather request we saw. We can do some uh, basic HTTP request, uh, get some results and uh, forward it uh, to FileMaker. And let's see how it works. Here we have this trigger, uh, script trigger for uh, our counter. And uh, we have this connection here to the Linux machine where the credentials are stored. We have to um, give it a name of a layout and the name of a script. Uh, let's look inside. We inject this data with a JSON object. So our layout name is test data API, the script name is count and an empty parameter. Now we look into our database. We have this count I make it a bit bigger that you can read something. So what it basically does it, it goes on this layout test data API, sets a variable of fields that is already there, uh, adds a number of one to it, writes it back to the, to the count uh, and write the data and go to the original layout and it gave a return value that we perhaps can use otherwise. So what we also needed was the name of the layout. If I go to layout mode here, 
there you see test data API. That is the na name that we injected in this JSON object on the left side. And that's all, name of a layout and a script name. And we could even give a parameter, but in this simple thing, uh, we don't have. So I trigger the hardware again and the counter is firing and some messages are sent between uh, Node-RED and the data API. And finally, the uh, script inside this database is called and uh, counts another one to this value. So that's the basic idea. idea. We have some other um, possibilities here, not only to uh, trigger scripts, but we can perform a find or we can create records. Um, the method is very similar. All we need is the payload with some data. Uh, we can optionally um, set a script to uh, perform and some other options. I don't really know what they do, but we look into this uh, test sample here. We provide a value. And somewhere all these values should be created in the format that the data AP would need. Okay. We have a variable that is called weather with a value of we. We is what we get from the previous part here in the payload. And then we create a uh, variable with a value of fm and put it into the payload and forward it to our create record item. So I'm not really sure what it does. I haven't tested it in a while, but uh, we can have a look here or just fire the script with a test. Okay, something should be modified. I think it's the one here. Here's the table, yes, here's our test. The idea behind this is that we uh, have a table with timestamps and uh, weather information, and uh, then we can trigger a node red to create records with the weather information it gets from an open uh, weather API somewhere in the web. So if I uh, trigger this, uh, here is the HTTP request. There comes the temperature. The temperature will be packed into our JSON object. The JSON object goes to the create record. And finally, we get this record here with a timestamp from uh, right now. And so we have a basic mechanism to get some values out of the web and put it into a FileMaker database. And the nice thing in Node-RED is that you could automate anything. So there is uh, not only the possibility to press a button, but uh, you can configure it to fire automatically. Here is an interval set by 15 minutes. We could change this to three seconds. Okay, we have to deploy again, prove this, and we have to watch our table data and look if something happens. So, and the ideas are counting 160, 161, 162, and we get the weather. It's not that changing any much in the short interval, but uh, Node-RED does this job very nicely. And so as we use the data API, we should not even have this FileMaker database open because it sits on the server and Node-RED is talking to the server and generates some uh, entries there for us uh, that we could depend on later in any other workflow. So you get the idea change the spec to another interval every 15 minutes, ready. So let's um, summarize what we have so far. We have the Node-RED environment with some building blocks. We have uh, some kind of um, message pipeline and can send uh, own JSON messages from one uh, flow to another or from one object to another. We have a plugin that gives us a connection to the data API without any hassle. If we set up this uh, subdomain, the SSL certificate and the um, account with the password, then we are ready to go and can make use of all these FileMaker objects that uh, the guy from the US created for us. And- uh, Lily Dog. Yes, and uh, the interesting thing is, this is not built by Node-RED because it's a public domain uh, contribution by Louis de la Parra. He made this plugin. It's not from FileMaker, it's not from Node-RED, 
It's uh, something a guy like us has built uh, with a lot of effort and gives it to us. And here comes the real interesting part. Uh, we have seen there are over 3,000 contributions in this open source repository. And all of this is free for us. We can, if you can look for anything imaginable, there are um, plugins for Microsoft Azure or whatever you need. Uh, and there are plenty of them. And for, for different proposals, not all, always uh, as perfect as, my, uh, as you might consider, but uh, often good enough to, to make some use of it. Try some other things. Contributions for connection to Amazon Cloud uh, or to do some uh, AI recognition of images or whatever you need. Uh, now comes the interesting part. It's like a big uh, warehouse of things where you can can do something with other services and you can just uh, request, look for a, a plugin, click a button, the plugin is installed into your Node-RED environment. You have the plugin for FileMaker and perhaps you will do some image recognition. You send some image data out of FileMaker to another API, uh, let Node-RED do the work, get some result and put the result back into the, your FileMaker solution. And so this up, opens up a whole new uh, range of possibilities. And uh, earlier this day, we saw this presentation about uh, Claris Connect. It is very similar, but we saw Connect has only uh, 50 integrations so far. Here we have over 3000. And uh, I think Connect is a bit different because it supplies some high level uh, workflows. Uh, if you have a MailChimp workflow, you just uh, put in your, uh, Flow plugin for Mailchimp, and everything is predefined for you. And uh, Node-RED is a bit more under the hood. There's a bit more groundwork to do. Uh, you get some basic um, elements, and you have to do some thinking. Have to configure your own message types. Uh, have to do some JavaScript here and there to uh, to modify it in a way that it, uh, fits to your solution. So at this part, uh, Class Connect might be a bit easier. But on the other side, uh, Node-RED has far more possibilities because there's a huge universe of uh, community of pre-built uh, elements and uh, the basic platform is very simple. If you understood it once, uh, you can, uh, the possibilities are sheer endless what you can do with it. So I will look at the clock uh, if we have some time left because uh, we have some uh, other few, some two cool uh, demo files here with FileMaker. I open it uh, from the Linux box. There is, uh, we make this one first. Okay, this is one of the other screen. Put this away for a moment. What it is, is, um, basically a table of uh, postcodes. I'd grabbed it somewhere on the web just to have some interesting uh, data, about 12,800 postcodes of Germany here inside. And uh, you can search for it in the FileMaker database. Um, there is an open street map ID, uh, the name of the uh, city, the postcode and uh, the, the state uh, where the city is located. So we have a basic layout here, which, which is called API. Remember, we need a clear name for the layout to address the data API. And so let's look if we can do something with it. And I promised you we built a REST API in one minute. I just show you the basic principle behind it. Uh, API endpoint should be the right thing. So we have a get object here. It looks simple, it is simple. But I have to find it. There it is. Hope it's the right one. 
if I make a get, sorry, use this one, HTTP node. Okay, I was wrong, sorry, HTTP is the right. So we have two types of HTTP nodes here. One is an HTTP in, and one is an HTTP response. And that is all we need, basically. We can drag in an in and give it a name with an URL. We give it the name of .fmp. That's all. And we do some thing in between basically a string or something, return hello. Drag this here and we have HTTP output that needs nothing because it gets the message and just displays it. So I press on deploy. And what we have basically done is we have defined a URL to this server address here I open it in another window and make it a bit larger. So what we expect it to do is we can uh, just type in .fmp. This is the name of the request we defined after our address. Press enter and something should happen. So we got a message here, an alert. Okay, there was something wrong. Try again, perhaps was not a good idea to change this. I put it in the message payload, like hello world. Deploy it again. We reload the page. This is web address and here's hello world. And so we have our own web API, our own REST API. This was under a minute, I hope so. I didn't watch at the clock. But the basic idea is you can define uh, the type of API. If you need a get, a post, a put, or whatever, you could give it a name, deploy it on your Node Red server, and it's ready to go. And now you could put in any payload, and the response item uh, will return the payload to the request. So the request could be insert from URL by a FileMaker script, or it could be a web viewer or a website or whatever, another platform doesn't make any difference. And what we uh, do now is we uh, go to this sample FileMaker postcode flow. And make it a bit larger that you can see it, what it does. We have some REST endpoints here. Get uh, auto is German for cities slash uh, zip code. Then we have cities slash name, cities slash state, and uh, cities slash uh, OpenStreetMap ID. So we can open our browser window again, type something in, auto, German name for city, Ort slash Berlin, and look if something happens. Okay, something went wrong. Perhaps I have to look up the name again, Ort PLZ or Ort Ort. Ah, okay, I see. It is not slash Berlin, it should be the parameter uh, with the um, circle. What is it called? Private zeichen. So, doesn't matter. We, uh, if it's not works, we put it directly from here. I deploy again. What it does is it puts together as a simple JSON object. Q is a query parameter from the payload that we get from this uh, API endpoint. We uh, design our own query object with the name of query. And uh, if we uh, enter the zip code, uh, it's short form PLC in Germany, uh, we do a PLC object inside the JSON with our value, put it together in our message payload and return it to the next item here. The same here with another endpoint. And this time we don't get the PLC, we get the odd city name. 
and they are similar with the Bundesland and with the OpenStreetMap ID. So we have this four endpoints function that uh, uh, customizes it to an um, identical format, and then we have our uh, perform find. And now we perform find on the FileMaker API. I have a different um, client here. Let's do if it does something. Then we would get a result and put it onto the output pane and on the result inside the browser. That pane is lost. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Button, okay. Let's look what goes wrong here. Let's remove the trigger again. Oops, wrong window. Okay, the property of undefined. Okay, something happened, but not what we expected. Please. Yes, okay. Now we are ready. Because Q for query was the, uh, was the value we got here. In, uh, you remember the um, JSON object and the JSON object request refers to the queue as a parameter and we have to type in the, the parameter with the queue in the URL. So we, now we can start something. We have our table here with all these um, data sets for the German cities. And if we type in some uh, postcode, it should return us uh, a list of entries from the database. We have here this uh, R bergen. I just copy this, put it into the URL as a parameter, and now we get a JSON object R bergen postletzal, and it uh, matches the information we have in our FileMaker file here. And uh, this is simple because uh, most of the times there are only one um, result uh, for this uh, code. But what about? Um, if we put it other way around, we search for Berlin, we expect Berlin to not only have one postcode, indeed we get a whole array of postcodes for Berlin, see the postcodes here, changes from line to line. And so uh, we have a basic mechanism to put all our results into JSON object and return it uh, from our data file to the browser. And so we, this is the other way around. Uh, first time we put something in FileMaker, the other way we uh, we get something out FileMaker. Oh, this is crazy here with the window jumping around. Sorry. And we have a look at it, how it works. There is no script at all. There might be some security settings for our data IP account here. The name of the account is data API and there is a uh, password which is invisible here, but we have set this up inside our perform script. We have here the URL of the FileMaker server, the name of our database, it's called POZ. As you can see, we have the account name, data API and the password. And that's all. And we could look at our query. The query is just, uh, we look, search for the uh, for the query string here, and the output is returned back as payload. So let's look at the JSON again. The query is FileMaker Data API syntax. There is a um, document from Claris, uh, which describes if you send um, a query to FileMaker Data API, what it should look like. And it should like this format, that there is a query element here, and then uh, a JSON with the field name and uh, the value. And uh, you get a result of an array. And the result is safe. Uh, we pass it through. We go through, uh, we create an empty array here, uh, have a for next loop in JavaScript that runs from uh, I zero to the data length and pushes the field data. This is FileMaker um, uh, logic again, uh, you get an array of field data, but we uh, are only interested in a part of it. And so the interesting part we put into a new array and the array is finally put into our payload and the payload is then returned to the browser or to our um, 
console here for the for the debug mode. So that's very quite simple, and um, I hope you can imagine there is a lot of possibilities in here. Um, can I show up something else? Perhaps move another one to query. Okay, this one. This is um, basically an interface in a FileMaker file where you can enter a city, make an AP call that is routed to Node-RED. Node-RED fetches some weather data and returns it as a result as a JSON object. And then the JSON object is um, parsed out uh, in FileMaker files. So you can see this here, I trigger it again. Someone can tell me the city where he sits, please. Do Hanover. Hanover, thank you. Let's look up the weather in Hanover. We have 18 degrees only and heavy rain. Yes. And <laughs> we even get some further information about wind. So the principle is quite the same as we saw Before, we set a new URL that points to our um, Node-RED server. We have a REST endpoint here, it's called RETA-RP. You will find it here somewhere. Don't know exactly. And then we give it a parameter to the string, ort gleich, and then the name of the ort we entered into the field, the city name. Then we basically do insert as from URL into a variable that is called result. And then uh, we can do something with it. We put it into our result field. Uh, we pass our JSON get element temperature and um, the weather description and put it into other fields and we write uh, record and that's all. Call it again. And that's quite simple. The idea here is to um, put all these heavy logic uh, for the weather API behind a simple call. Because this is really simple. We only have to ad address with a, uh, a token, a prepared token, and the name of a value we want to look up. And the result is put into a variable. And that's all. No authentication, no uh, certificates, no uh, login, or whatever is needed. And the good thing is uh, that only makes sense if, the, uh, if we do it here in our own environment. But if something changes and we need another weather API or the service breaks down or there's a better or cheaper service or what else, we can just change uh, um, the definition here in our Node-RED element and the FileMaker solution will just work the same as before because we abstracted the API call behind uh, Node-RED um, REST API endpoint that we defined for ourselves. And you can imagine all sorts of API calls. Uh, you call some information from one service, one from another. Uh, you make some logic uh, happening here behind the scenes. And finally, when all your logic is done and you uh, have you got your values that you needed, then uh, you put the result of your request somewhere into your FileMaker solution. You, one way would be to create a record. The other way would be to just get an HTTP response and put it into some variable of fields with uh, insert from URL. And that's really simple. 
So I will end with the demo part so far. We have uh, time left for uh, some questions, I hope. Um, I will just uh, give you a few slides uh, to get further information later. Okay, I'm really sorry. I speak a bit louder. My headset just crashed, but it's live presentation. So as Egbert always says, we have some crazy stuff going on and sometimes it goes and sometimes it went wrong. We won't read through the whole table here. I prepared some uh, comparison between uh, Claris Connect and Node-RED and there's uh, quite some similarities here. Uh, but what is interesting, there are some uh, uh, interesting differences also. So it basically shows some similarities and differences between Claris Connect and Node-RED. And um, the main difference is uh, there's a license model for Claris Connect, whereas Node-RED is open source. Uh, but there are some technical aspects as well, because Claris Connect is only in the cloud so far. Uh, I did not remember if they announced something uh, that they will provide on-premise um, option as well. But Node-RED on the other side is supported in all major operating systems. It runs on Raspi for 70 bucks. It runs on a Linux uh, um, machine, on, on Mac OS, on Unix, on Windows, you name it. Uh, so there are plenty of options and uh, there are also some cloud providers. You can do it on the big ones uh, in the cloud and there are uh, some specialized services as well. They will charge you some license fees uh, as well. So there's no that big difference to Claris Connect but uh, I think in here in the bottom section, we see some uh, even more interesting things we saw in the presentation before. As today, Claris Connect has only 56 connectors, whereas uh, Node-RED has over 3,300 uh, plugins available. That not all, that's not all high quality plugins, uh, it's open source. So expect not everything uh, well-defined, but there are some really, really good ones as well. And so it's, it's uh, worth to dive in it. Um, own connectors, uh, you can build it on the red. Uh, Claris had, has announced something I remember so far. And uh, here on the bottom section is the, the main difference for me. I tried, I, I told you before, I tried to get into Claris Connect and Claris made it so difficult for me uh, at an early stage that I uh, did not find any point to get into it. Whereas, Node-RED came by, uh, by an incident, uh, was not intended to use it, but uh, as I got it, it was so easy to, uh, to set up something in a, in a few days and to, to dive into because of the huge community, of the huge learning resources, uh, type in something in, in Google, Node-RED, Raspi, and you name any kind of idea or project, you will find someone uh, who already does it. And so there's a very mature open source industry around it. Uh, the whole home automation uh, thing is uh, mainly based on Node-RED. There are some other players, uh, but uh, they are into it and the IoT thing and uh, web API thing as well. Um, and you get a lot of ideas if you see what crazy things that people done with it. Uh, they automate their gardening and whatever and their house pets and uh, everything is possible with some hardware integration and crazy ideas. And uh, it's not that uh, huge um, entry point uh, here on the Node-RED side. So there are some plenty of links as starting points. And I compiled something for you. Uh, uh, you can download it later. Um, just to summarize it, why is Node-RED great? In my opinion, it's open source. It's quick start and no fees. You can just do some experiments uh, before paying some uh, fees or hosting services. It runs on any platform, so you can do it at home in a small device or in a, uh, a virtual machine. There is a very huge community. It's uh, full of blogs and tutorials. Uh, we have seen this uh, many plugins, even for FileMaker. And it's uh, for me, it's an ideal, ideal platform to learn low code. And it does not say anything about if I use Close Connect or other platforms later, but it's a kind of playing ground to, to get the ideas, to understand the concepts, and to have something to start with. And uh, I think for this purpose alone, Node-RED is a good, uh, uh, interesting um, topic to deal with. And that is the reason why I presented it here today and tomorrow. And uh, you get further information. I compiled a text list with starting points, with links uh, for Respy and tutorials. And uh, you can even get the sample files as a download, uh, the, the city, um, 
sample with the with the REST API. Uh, this is fully documented with uh, passwords and everything you need. Uh, the JSON objects for the flows in Node-RED are included in the database and FileMaker. And anything you need is to set up your own environment and you find the links for this in this quick start guide. And uh, it is possible to do it. You have to invest one or two days uh, to, to dig into, but it's, uh, it's worth it. And uh, sneak preview for tomorrow, same time, same uh, room, uh, 70 node red. We will uh, look at a special project building a FileMaker server dashboard with node red. Uh, we saw a bit about dashboards today and uh, what you can do with it. And we saw this uh, FileMaker data integration. Today, uh, today uh, tomorrow, you will learn something new uh, that is not depending on the data API, but uh, makes direct connection uh, to the server machine. And so perhaps we we'll see you again tomorrow. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And there was a lot to learn and to carry with you. And if you want to connect with me, there are some uh, starting points. I'm on Twitter, I have a blog. Uh, and if you like my photos, I will be lucky if you visit my uh, Flickr or Instagram account. The uh, links are inside the presentation. And I have to say thank you. I am sorry that there were a few crashes and glitches, but I hope the sense was worth it to, uh, to be here today and to, uh, as well as I thank you, it was nice to share the chance with you here to give the presentation. So we can, if you like, and there's quite some time, we can do a simple question and answer, or we can do it inside the chat or tomorrow or to whatever occasion we will find today or tomorrow to speak with each other. So thanks a lot.